Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a continuation of, uh, I, I call it the Committee of Despair, um, as we kind of continue to see these issues and, and feel like um, generation after generation we fail. Um, and I don't mean to pick on you, Mr. McSwain, um, and I know you're acting, but I don't think there is one Native American who lives in Indian country who thinks that Indian health is providing any kind of treatment for behavior and mental health. Not anyone that, that I think um, lives in North Dakota. And so when your answer to Senator Hoven was you provide treatment, I, I'm gonna ask you a simple question. Every person who you're responsible for as, as a constituent and a patient of Indian health, if they needed behavior and mental health services, would they get it from you? They could come into the clinic and whether or not we have the professionals there, we have had a real uh, challenge in hiring healthcare, uh, behavioral health professionals. So the answer is no. The answer is no. Not exactly that, that, no. Yeah, you can't, I don't no, agree. it's not even, not exactly no, it's no. Um, and and that, that's one of the problems. And I completely appreciate the healthcare workforce problem that we have because it's combined with a rural workforce health problem, health care worker problem that we have. So it's extraordinarily difficult. But once again, Indian health, which should be providing treatment. Now let's forget about prevention. I'm not even going to put that on you. But you should be providing treatment because we've heard here that without families, Senator Franken just told you that when he visited a center, all these kids said they started using with their parents. So if, if, if we think we can just visit with kids and that's going to solve the problem, kids do what they see, not what they're told. And what they see every day, um, kids who are in this situation, is they see a culture of, a, of, of abuse. They see a culture of uh, a drug abuse. And they feel a lot of despair. And so Indian Health, you know, has been unrelentingly unable to address healthcare crisis in Indian country. And this is a huge part of it, behavior and mental health. And so, you know, let's not, let's not pretend that we're providing services because the worst thing that we can do here is pretend that we're doing the right thing. And Mr. Walters, you, you'd like, you know, I don't know if you got a page out of my, my you know, speeches or whatever it is, but, you know, I, th I think you're trying to speak truth about what's actually going on and where we go from here. But one of the issues that I have a lot of concern about is generation after generation, and we can talk about generational trauma. This committee has held a hearing on trauma, and, and I think there's some hope in some of the research. But there is a, an amazing lack of, of scanning and um, looking back at fetal alcohol effects and fetal alcohol syndrome. And we know that one of the symptoms of fetal alcohol is really a lack of consequential thinking. And so where we say, well, why don't you just get it? That bad things happen when you drink and you should just quit drinking. Well, when you're dealing with somebody who already has a genetic impairment, it's very difficult. So when we're talking about screening, which I, I thought, excellent point, maybe after, too late after the fact, as, as you know, when, if we, we get them in Head Start, maybe we got a shot. But what, what about screening for fetal alcohol effect and fetal alcohol uh, syndrome? And what strategies would you deploy in terms of treatment? Well, I, I agree with you about, uh, I think the screening should also, also obviously include alcohol. And what it allows is it, it, it helps people understand that this is a disease. So it gets rid of some of the resistance and shame by having a medical professional say, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, and provide some information at the time of the screening. But also, you're right, there has to be, when you find a positive, you're going to have to have people who are able to do family intervention. And, and, and you're going to have to have people that are going to be able to, to work with people in, in a way that meets them where they are. Now, again, we do have problems in the workforce. But part of the reason we can't get the urgency to get the workforce fixed is because we're not presenting people with the number of illnesses. We do that in a whole bunch of other diseases. We say we need the capacity to treat this disease at these numbers. And in other venues, that's what generates the infrastructure. And, and when, when, you, when you don't do that, when you don't recognize you have a problem, then you have no solutions to that. Right. You're, you're, you're just part of the noise in the budget debate <laughs> and in the debate about what the community needs to do. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of stuff to do. you got to get up to the part of the to-do list that gets done. Right. And then I don't think you have to be the committee of despair. <laughs> this can be done. 
It just takes some people who are going to be able to lead, and the government has the ability now to show you people where this is and to reinforce what these people are doing and saying it's a priority in a state, in a region, and in the government of the United States. I, you can fix these bureaucracies. It just takes enough pressure. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you more. I just want to just just a couple more points. Um, I once went to a high school, uh, and there was actually it was a junior high, and I asked how many kids were drinking. This wasn't a Native American school, and about thirty percent raised their hand. I mean, they they reported that their friends were drinking. So you can take it from there. And I said, well, why why are you drinking? And these kids started saying peer groups and all this. I said, you're drinking to get high. And so it is, we, we need to recognize that there is some amount of, of um, you know, kind of secondary effect here. This is, this is, uh, um, this is a, a, a very complicated problem. And but, but also back to your original point, no matter what the, the demographic, underage, dr substantial underage drinking, in my experience, cannot exist unless adults enable it. Yeah, well, I think that's correct. Miss... Uh, Goggles, uh, your, your testimony is, uh, again, has a huge impact on all of us as we kind of look forward. Um, I want to know what, what kind of services Indian Health could provide at Wind River that would make a difference to you that would be, um, would be altering for um, your tribe. Well, thank you. Um, I think one of the biggest parts is the MSPI program. We utilize the MSPI funding to do a horse culture program, and it's a way of getting our youth back to utilizing um, their traditional values as far as taking care of their horses. They show them how to ride, show them how to take care of them. I mean, it's just a really good program. It gives our youth an opportunity to have get in touch with their culture. And now the funding is, is competitive. And so that makes things a little bit more difficult because I don't know what these other tribes but, are doing. But to Senator Franken's point, do you have any long-term studies that shows that a program like this would actually result in a 20, 30-year you know, history of sobriety? No, because the program just started that's, this last year. Yeah, that's the problem. And the funding, actually, you know, that's one of the things, though. You fund things for a year or your fun things are funded for three years. So you're not going to get a long-term study We don't study have off a of strategy. We just have a series of events, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the extra time. Uh, thank you, Senator Heitkamp. 